as we speak. I mean, like, tell me you've got... You must... No. This year, the course is a little bit longer, but I expect it to still be a foot race. These guys are as quick laden as unladen. Well, the athletes are getting ready behind us. It's time to start the finals. Well, eight strong men, eight world-class competitors. This really is an outstanding final. Any one of these eight wouldn't look out of place in the final of the world's strongest man. But who's going to win the title of Britain's Strongest Man 2008? We're about to start the process. From England, Eddie Elwood. Might be the oldest man in the field. In lane two from England, Mark Westerby. And here's the other guy that uh, flies the flag for the over 40s. Lawrence Shackley. And the youngsters. From England, Jimmy Marku. The man who's always got a smile on his face. Well, these anvils really should wipe the smile off anybody's face. It should be a sprint. And who's got fast? Well, look at uh, Lawrence Charlet. He's got a big lead. Mark, who's wobbling and struggling a little bit. But Charlet, look at the focus. He's touched the white line, and now it's the return journey. That turn's so difficult, though. But uh, Charlet's made mincemeat of this. He's attacking it. Can his grip hang out, though? And Mark, who's still going strong as well in second place. Lawrence Charlet has dominated it. Mark Westerby's trying to make a move for second place, but I think Mark, who's just going to hold it, no, he's got to get it over the line, and does. Only just beats Westerby, who's also got to get it over as well. And poor old Eddie Elwood on the far side there. He's having a tough time. Now, is he going to finish? He really needs to, because if you come last in an eight-man field, well, it's impossible to make those points back up. The challenge is over before it's begun, and all the uh, teammates there willing him on. Eddie makes it in 55 seconds, just under. But it was this man who tore it up. He went off like an express train. Well, Lawrence, a blistering start to the morning. A little bit better than uh, how you managed it last year. Thanks, yeah. Last year, I was going a little bit too fast. Got carried away and fell over. Cost me a good place in the farmers last year. So I was a little bit cautious this year. I tried to just go at a steady pace on the way back, do a good turn, balance the farmers because they're very, very awkward, and then just try and power my way to the finish line. So the next four guys due up, and they're the favourites for this event because they won their heats. I've been second twice in this competition, and this year I'm going home with a title. I finished third last year in Britain's Strongest Man, and I've been training hard this year, and this year, hopefully, I've got what it takes to win it. I wasn't there last year to defend my title. Terry stole it, I wasn't even there. This year, I'm back, so now, Terry, you've got to prove it to me. Are you really Britain's Strongest Man? Probably the toughest Britain's Strongest Man ever, but I'm not ready to give over my title or my sword just yet. Well, what a quality quartet this is. In lane one from England, Ollie Thompson. One former champion right here. In lane two from England, Darren Sadler. A man that's been on the podium in this event. In lane three from England, Mark Felix. A man with two consecutive second places. In lane four from England, Terry Holland. And the reigning champion. If there's a weak link in this group, I'd be very surprised. Ready. They may be the best of British, all of them are world-class. And Felix has gone off fast, very fast, and Terry's trying to stay with him. Right now it's Ollie that's feeling the pace a little bit. Darren is a little bit off the pace as well, but Felix is putting down a big marker here. We'll have to keep an eye on the clock, but I think he's going to tear up Lawrence Charlet's time if he can carry on. No, he's stumbling a little bit. This is going to be really close. Just outside, but he won't be too unhappy about that. Good point. And Hollands has kind of blown up a little bit. Now, this is a surprise. Well, Terry's grip's just giving up at him. That's uh, so unlike him. It really is. And look who's coming up on the far side there. Ollie having a go. I tell you, all four in the first heat finished, though. And Darren Sadler is having a terrible time back there. Hollands can see the finish line. Can he get there? Sadler's got to do some work. Holland staggers over. 
Ollie Thompson. I don't think he's going to make it, but what about Darren Sadler? What a shot that is. Oh, he won't be happy with that. Well, Mark, an explosive performance, but just edged out by Lawrence Shackley. But unlike last year, you didn't take a tumble, so still a good time. Yeah, it's a good time for me. You know? I know Lawrence is pretty really fast, yeah, but I just wanted to be up there. And buried among the also rounds, the reigning champion Terry Holland's down in sixth place. Big Tell has lost his safety net now. One event down, five to go. Join us after the break when our human wrecking balls take on the car flip. Sponsored by Fisherman's Friend. Oh, you must try new Weedabix bite size. All the goodness of Weedabix, just really tiny like new Weedabix bite size. New Glade Sense and Spray has a unique feature. It has a clever little motion sensor, which means where you position it could be quite important. As it only activates the unit to release a burst of fresh Glade fragrance when you want it to. New Sense and Spray with a motion sensor from Glade. S.C. Johnson & Family Company. Is this right, Churchill? When I join, I get 25% off my home insurance and a no-claims discount. <laughs> oh, yes! As we get older, our immune system can weaken, which can leave us feeling run down. Hey, run that! Give us all back, please! Drinking Actimel every day is scientifically proven to help support your immune system as part of your body's defences. And you can continue to enjoy the things you love. Actinel. Help support your body's defenses. Guns, girls, geezers. Guy Ritchie returns to diamond form. Rock and Roller is electric. What do you think we are? Gangsters? Rock and Roller. I want to be a producer. Wear a tux on opening night. See my name in lights. For one night only, the movie premiere of The Producers. 7.30, Sunday on 5. Sponsored by Fisherman's Friend. Welcome back to Minehead, where it's fun in the sun for some, but not for these eight athletes who are all vying for the title of Britain's Strongest Man. And for the Elite Eight, it's a road trip with a difference now. Colin Bryce and Martin Bayfield will explain. Customer care report item number four. Are you satisfied with the condition of your new car? Frankly, no, I'm not. Colin, where's the air con? Actually, Martin, we pimped this ride. Check out the accessories. We put a roll cage bar right here and one inside so the guys can grab the 800 kilo car and flip it four times. And Martin, you're lucky. We've left the suspension in. How wonderfully reassuring. Time for the car flip. Time for me to get out. Well, after that disastrous start, Darren Sadler needed big points. He got four flips in 45.56. Not a bad time. But he was just edged out by big Mark Westerby, who managed it in 43.97. Eddie Elwood, well, he managed the four flips, but the time wasn't too good, 53.13. And Ollie Thompson came along and split Sadler and Elwood with a 44.44. It takes an awful lot to wipe the smile off this man's face. Next up, Jimmy Marku. When he's winning, he's smiling. When he's losing, he's smiling. Let's see if this car will wipe the smile off his face, though. Right, the clock is what it's all about. There's the first flip, and that's a decent time. Just under eight seconds. If he can keep that going, he'll take the lead, but uh, that's easier said than done. There's the second flip. Now the spin around to the other side to take it back. Oh, he's absolutely tearing it up, isn't he, here, Jimmy? 
Well, the heaviest part is off the floor, and look how quick he is. He's a bit lower than some of the other guys and has great deadlifting power. But look at that, just over 30 seconds, officially clocked at 31.16. Oh, yeah, no wonder he's happy. He's taken 12 seconds off the previous best. Well, Jimmy, you didn't just beat the best time so far, you destroyed it. Well, yeah, I knew I was going to do pretty well. I practice with the cars in my state where I live because they block my parking space, so... I had a quite good goal. So uh, maybe another career as a traffic warden? Yeah, I, I think the council should afford me a position as a traffic warden now. <laughs> oh, excellent, thanks, Jimmy. Next up, Mark Felix. Now Mark's normally a smiling, happy-go-lucky guy, a guy, but when you run her up in this competition not once but twice it does put a different edge on your perspective and he is desperate for this title he's not getting any younger either he puts a lot of pressure on himself mark now into his 40s oh and... didn't need that lost a few seconds you really do have to keep the car moving don't you once you've got it up off the floor Keep your hands on it, push, push. Well, he's not going to match the 31.16 of Jimmy Marku, so his next target is Mark West of his 43.97. And he's suddenly finding it tough going here. He should still be OK if he can just roll it over. He'll go into second place, or will he? He's struggling. That's going to be very close. I think he just got in. Oh, my goodness me. Second place, but only just. Next up, Terry Hollands. <laughs> Big tell to his friends, the man from Dartford, and he knows the deal. He's been around this game long enough to know that when you start off sixth in the first heat, or sixth in the first event, I should say, you can't afford any more slip-ups. He's got to do well from here on out in every event. Well, he hasn't just paid the price in terms of points, he's paid it in terms of injury as well. His hands all cut up from those farmer's walks slipping out of his hand. Just wonder how that'll affect him. Remember, 31.16 to beat. He's not going to do that, so he's going to have to look at uh, Felix's time of 42 seconds. He'll have to get inside that to take second place, and I think he's going to do that. Yes, he is. And a look around as if to say, you wrote me off, you did that too soon. Yeah, he's all right. There's plenty of time left. Now, the leader. Next up, Lawrence Shackley. Lawrence, who's managed to uh, erase the memories of last year when he qualified for the final and tore a bicep and was eliminated. The current leader, can he keep that lead? I think Mark, whose target might just be too good, but I think uh, Lawrence has got to think in terms of getting under 43 seconds. If he can do that, he's guaranteed a top three spot, and that will be good enough to keep him in the lead, you would think. Well, slight mistake there, he thought the momentum was taking it over on that second flip and uh, he had to stop and push again, so that's cost him a few seconds. He's got half a chance at uh, a really good finish here. Mark, whose time has gone, but he's going to be very close to Terry Hollands if he can finish the job here. Now, no, he's not going to beat Hollands, but he'll take third spot with that and he'll be very happy, a third to go with his first. Yeah! All eight finalists completed four flips, but Jimmy Marku didn't put a foot wrong, over four seconds quicker than anyone else. A better result from Hollands. In the overall standing, Marku and Charlet share the spoils, but Darren Sadler, third last year, has made a poor start. Now we've relocated to the harbour wall for heat three of the finals and it's the log press. Each of these logs weighs 125 kilos and the athletes will go head to head and try and lift these as many times as they can in 75 seconds. It's all about shoulder strength and it'll take a Herculean effort to come out on top in this one. Well Darren Sadler gave it a good go, eight lifts is no mean achievement. And is it enough for a man bringing up the rear of the field? Mark Westerby is trying to hang on to the leaders. Five lifts wouldn't do him any good at all. And a tremendous effort from Ollie Thompson. 
with nine lifts. That'll be good points for him. Mark Felix! <laughs> Terry Hollands! One and two from last year. Currently three and four this year. So the big names are starting to sort themselves out. Nine is their target. This is a lot heavier than it was a year ago. So if these guys think that uh, they can just re repeat what they did a year ago, uh, got some news for these fellas. Well, we saw up at 13 reps last year, but it was 10 kilos lighter. They've been weighted up this year. And, uh, well, Felix just ahead of Hollands. But Hollands is taking his time. He's taking a big breather, which is either good strategy or a sign that the big fella is in a little bit of trouble. And he's allowed Felix to open up some daylight. Now he's back in business. Remember, Ollie Thompson's nine is their target. Terry just doesn't look as dominant as last year, no. does he? No, he doesn't. No, T Terry manages another lift there, but it wasn't the most convincing you'll ever seen. So he joins Westerby on five. And Felix knows that he's got a couple of guys ahead of him still. Sadler is still up there on eight. Thompson's on nine, and both of them are breathing pretty hard. And Terry's got that look in his eyes as if to say, this isn't flowing this year. It's not what it was last year. Felix needs that one to tie up with Darren Sadler. And Terry moves past Mark Westerby, but he's got a lot of names ahead of him. Well, I think Felix will say, well, that's OK. But Terry Hollands is starting to feel that sword slip from his grasp. Lawrence Shackley! Well, I don't think too many people... Jimmy would have had these two fellas as the event leaders after two, but that's what they are. And they've seen Mark Felix in third place put eight up. So they know they have to match that at least. If they can put a ninth up there, or even a tenth to take maximum points, that would do them a world of good. Oh, mistake there from Jimmy. He didn't lock it out at the top and uh, had to press it out again. You've got to wait for the referee's signal. He's up and running, and Charley's struggling a little bit. Yeah, they'll give him that one. Jimmy still nursing the uh, wound to his forehead there, that car crash that he had a few days ago. But he seems to have cleared the effects of those out of his system. Now, can he find a seventh? Yes, he can. He needs at least one more. And so, too, does Lawrence Charley. He's struggling a little bit. He needs another one to match Holland's. Marku matches Felix. So Felix won't gain any ground on him. But Charlotte's got work to do, and he knows it. He needs a couple more here. Now, this is a big lift right here for Marku. And if he can do it, he goes into joint top spot, and he gets it with Ollie Thompson. That's a big one right there from Charlotte. Has that time for one more for these two fellas? No, there isn't. Marku gets a share of the lead. Charlet's celebrating, but he would have loved just one more because Felix has closed the gap on him and might even have moved ahead of him. Well, Jimmy, the crowd seem to have taken you to their hearts. You've tied for first place on the log press. You end the day well in the lead. You must be delighted. Yeah, I'm very happy. And it's been great. Been in good shape. I'd like to thank the audience because without them, I would have done that well. And thank you for all, for our posing. And if they want a free ride tomorrow in the train, I'll be pulling the train first o'clock. And I trust me, that will be for free, OK? <laughs> Excellent stuff. Well, you have a good rest. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. I love you all. No surprise that Jimmy's happy. Joint top with Ollie Thompson means that last year's fourth place finisher is mounting a hugely impressive title challenge. Elwood's shoulder injury forced him to sit that event out. Marku is now over eight points clear of Hollands and Thompson, the last two champions. If any event illustrates what these guys can do, it's the next one. We're at Minehead Station, normally the tranquil home of West Somerset Railway and a shrine to the golden age of steam. But for now, it's time for the human locomotives to rumble out of the engine shed 
for the train pull. Martin, our strongmen have to pull these six carriages weighing nearly 60 tons for 20 meters. To make it just a little bit easier, we've added this special track so they can pull with their arms and drive with their legs. But still, it'll be a superhuman feat. Westerby was the first man up. He completed the course in one minute, four seconds, point nine six. Ollie Thompson was next, and he did it in just under the minute. And Eddie Elwood ran out of gas, but he too completed the course. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next competitor. Who has the pressure of being the tournament leader, Jimmy Marku. <laughs> And he knows that the three guys Ready? that have gone before him have all done it. Momentum, the key. That and coordination. Get those arms and legs working together. So hard to get this 60 tons moving. Oh, and a little slip there. What you can't do is let it stop, because if it stops, you just try moving it again. You've got to keep it going. Well, unlike a truck pull where the momentum, it just keeps coming at you, this you stop for even a second, all of those carriages will grind to a halt. And that initial inertia is so hard to get over. Absolutely, he's just gone past the uh, 10 meter and look at that, now he's got it together. And it's starting to really flow for Jimmy. A little stumble earlier, but look at this, he's really starting to rip it up. And 57.12 is the time to beat, he's in good shape. And the stopwatch is out. And it is stopped at 51. Point four three. He goes into the lead. Lawrence Shackley. Lawrence, of course, started the tournament so well. He's had a little bit of a blip, but he's still in good shape. The top three know that uh, the defending champion is on their heels as well. And Lawrence needs to make sure he stays in the top three spot and keep Terry Hollands out the way. And who knows, with a good pull here, he could still be back in front. Well, that was a hard getaway, wasn't it? He drove with double leg power there for the first few steps. But he doesn't quite have the, the bulk to help him get it off the mark that someone like Terry Hollands will have. Yeah, and he had another little stumble there, but he's kept the rhythm going, so that's important. 51.43 is Marku's time. The next target after that is 57.12. And the clock's his biggest enemy, just like Jimmy. He got, uh, he's got some momentum, but this doesn't look like it's going to be particularly fast. Oh, he's fumbling all of those railings now. Fatigue's kicking in, and he's getting a bit goofy. Well, he's got a chance. 57.12 is the next target. If he can get inside that, it's good points. Oh, I think he just did it, you know. He did. By less than a second, he goes into second place. And it's taken everything out of him. Now you can see as the fatigue kicked in, uh, those railings quite slippy. And uh, just made it. Well, Lawrence, just what you need, me sticking your microphone under your nose. But so far, that's the second fastest time. You happy with that? I'm delighted with that. <laughs> I wasn't... <laughs> I wasn't too sure how this was going to go, you know? It's not very easy to practice pulling a train, so... <laughs> I wasn't quite sure how it would go, but picked up a few tips from some guys, and I can't ask for more than that. Top two guys to go. I don't think anyone will stop Terry on an event like this, but if I can get third, I'd be very happy. So can Terry Hollands or Mark Felix derail the Jimmy Marco Express? We'll find out after the break. Sponsored by Fisherman's Friend. Protect against rising costs with direct line home insurance. Receive 12 months cover for the price of nine. Remember, you won't find our great deals on price comparison websites. Come direct to directline.com or call 0845 246 3537 now. You tried to play me, but you never paid me, never. Oh, no, you didn't. 
Payback is a coming, you will be running forever. Oh no, you did! Until I get my vengeance, I will never end this mayhem. Oh no, you did! I'm a mercenary, you ain't got a prayer, you owe me. Mercenaries too. At Curry's, with some amazing offers. This Packard Bell PC is now only 299 Save £50. This Samsung laptop with 4 gig memory is only 499 Or it's free when you sign up to free mobile broadband in-store. There's so much worth studying at Curry's now. I have to juggle being a mother and being a teacher and being a wife and I tend to find I just grab things on the go. So I used to feel quite sluggish, quite bloated. After I started eating Activia, I began to feel benefits uh, and now I've continued to do it, I do feel a lot better. Activia, with its unique culture Bifidus Actiregularis, works alongside the good bacteria in your gut and helps improve slower digestive transit. I have every female in my family eating it. Yeah, I'm spreading the word. <laughs> Activia, actively good. Mm, then Multi-grain cocoa rocks. Some are soft, some are crunchy. Cocoa rocks and milk. What goes on in that bowl? Fragments. Have you cleaned your bedroom yet? Yeah! Have you cleaned the hut yet? Yeah! Have you cleaned the car yet? Yeah! At least they'll clean their plates with the KFC Deluxe Bonus Box. Eight pure breast mini fillets, popcorn chicken, fries, sides, and a bottle of Pepsi. Right, I'll clear up. It's all right, Mum. We'll do it. Polish off the KFC Deluxe Boneless Box, only $12.99. And it's 25% off all of our premium tyres when you buy four. Now that's good. What else do you do? Guns, girls, geezers. Guy Ritchie returns to diamond form. Rock and Roller is electric. What do you think we are? Gangsters? Rock and Roller. <laughs> Sponsored by Fisherman's Friend. Welcome back to Minehead, where the news from the competitors' area is that Darren Sadler has had to withdraw with a hamstring injury. He did suffer that hamstring injury in the heats, and it's definitely affected his game here. So that leaves the two big hitters. Mark Felix! With Terry Hollands to come, Mark and his youngsters, and his wife there, they know the dad needs a fast time here. 51.43 is Mark, whose time. Hollands potentially can rip that to shreds. And Felix hasn't made a good start at all. He needs to get some momentum going. Now it's starting to move, but he lost a few seconds there early. Well, he was undecided how many uh, two-footed pushes he should do before he starts uh, driving with one leg. And uh, this got caught between railings there. He knows he has to put in a big time because, of course, Hollands came first in the truck pull at World's Strongest Man last year and the year before, so this event will suit him down to the ground. Well, he's having a tough time at the moment. It looks like he might struggle to break the minute. It is going a bit better for him now. Now he's starting to pick it up in the second half. Mark, whose time's going to be safe. And I think Charlet's 56.18 could be safe as well. So he's losing a bit of ground here, Felix, on his main rivals. Oh, did he get it? Oh, 56.16. It's two hundredths of a second inside Charley. Wow, that was close. But Terry Hollands, Terry Hollands, I'm sure, has looked at that, and he knows he's in fourth place. He hasn't had a good tournament, but a big train pull here could put him back amongst the big boys. Oh, hello. 
Well, we didn't expect this. We're so used to Terry just going off like an express train, excuse the pun. But once he gets going, he really will start flying. But he's maybe uh, having trouble with that right hand. He's not really gripping. So, uh, well, he's one limb short, isn't he, then, if he's only got two legs and a hand to, to pull with. Yeah, that hand that he injured in the farmer's walk. He's starting to get it going now, but how much time did he lose right at the start there? Getting the momentum going. Remember, Marku is 51.43, then it's 56 for Charlet and for Felix. And he's had another stumble, and if he can't beat 56, I'm not sure that Terry Hollands is going to be defending his title. He does. He doesn't take Marku's 51, but 53.63. But it didn't seem to flow for Terry Hollands. You saw how slack the rope was at the end there. He wasn't even pulling it for the last few metres. He was just stumbling. Well, Terry, we can see he's still pumped up after that. That's the second fastest. Jimmy just beating you on that. How do you see it? Um, I mean, thought the time was pretty good. Got a good start. Got the train moving, no problem. But um, just about halfway down the course, I almost couldn't keep any pressure on because the train was actually moving too quickly for me to keep anything on. That was it all over, really. For second place, that's not too bad. No, it's um, still on, on a big charge to try and get on the podium. I think Jimmy would have to have a shocker in these last two events to, to not win the title now, but um, I'm still in with a chance, an outside chance, but still a chance. Hollands was expected to dominate this event, but Marku rattles up his third win in a row, leaving Hollands a distant second. Holland's dreams of retaining his title seem to have vanished, as have Ollie Thompson's comeback hopes. It's left to Mark Felix to mount a charge. Well, it's been man against machine in one form or another in this final up to now, but not anymore, it gets personal. The wrestling ring has been set up. You get two points if you push your opponent out, one point for three throws inside the ring, and if there's a draw, most throws wins. Well, Mark, the wrestling is nearly upon us. He's six points behind Jimmy, half a point ahead of Lawrence. So are you going to chase Jimmy or make sure you keep Lawrence firmly behind you? I think um, there's two more events to go. I'm going to still chase Jimmy. You know, anything can happen, you know, in any event. So we don't know. So I just have to go all the way. up the action at the halfway stage. Hollands lies second behind Marku, but he has bouts in hand. Can he make them count? Well, a little bit more hand-to-hand -hand combat. These two fellas just separated by half a point on the scoreboard in the battle for second place, but uh, neither of them has exactly excelled in the circle thus far. Oh, they're going for the push-out, but certainly uh, Charlet is, and did he get it? Did he get it? Yeah, out first was Felix, who glowers at the referee as if to say, no, I wasn't. But it's two points for Lawrence Charlet, and didn't he need him? And Felix walks off in disgust, but let's take another look. The official perfectly placed, and yes, he is out first. Terry Hollins versus Ollie Thompson. Well, size matters, of course, but leverage is a big deal in the wrestling ring as well, and Ollie Thompson's got to use his leverage as best he can here, because to get a push out against Big Tell is going to be difficult, but he could spin him around. Now, who went out first there? Yeah, they did seem to go out at exactly the same time, and uh, Thompson was clever there, because he was able to use a bit of Holland's momentum against him. So still on as even. You'd think Holland's might fancy going for the throw, but they both want that extra point, don't they? Oh! I think Hollands might have gone there. He did. The arm came out. Hollands having a look, and he doesn't like it, but that arm seemed to land. Yes, it did. Oh, gee. Thompson's arm was under there as well, but Thompson gets the decision. So Terry Hollands needs this badly. Marco, of course, a wrestler in Albania many years ago. Hollands was a judo player, he represented England at a junior level, so these two fellas know all about a little bit of mano a mano. Marco's going for the leverage, and he's got Hollands moving. And Hollands has got to be clever here and try and throw him out, but it's Marco that kept the momentum going. 
but did he fall out first? What landed first? We're going to have to take a very, very close look at this. Because Holland's lost his balance, then regained it, but it is the knee down for Marku. Come together. Ready, wrestle. So it counts as a throw for Holland. No, oh, now what will that count as? Wait. Hang on, let me set double check with the hand fight. Well, Marku, they definitely put a hand down. And oh, we're going to have to take a very close look at this, and it's the hand again. Come into the middle, in the middle. So they've gone down at the same time. So Marku must be feeling very grieved here. He's had Holland on the run twice, but hasn't managed to get the clean push out, and he's been thrown again. Down on the ground. First time. Ready, Jimmy? Wrestle! So Jimmy's just got to stay within himself here. And I think Five Hollands is going to get the point. The one point win to Holland. Yeah, he needed that as well. But Marku was so unlucky. Did everything right, didn't get the break. And Marku needing some running repairs to that injured forehead. Damaged in that car crash of a few days ago. He'll be all right. <laughs> Ready, wrestle! Mark Westerby, the senior citizen here. Well, he's definitely had a go at old Felix there. Westerby. Felix yeah, Felix again has another look, but he's got no complaints. Mark Westerby got him going and spun him out. Very nicely done. Yeah, no question. Felix out first. Okay. Trying to face each other. Get ready, wrestle! Felix needs the two points badly here, and he goes for the uh, push down, so... Right. Okay. Thompson a little Lost bit slow to get up. One throw to Felix. So a throw, he needs three of those to score the point, and... Uh, get ready. Oh, Lolly's looking a little bit weary. This is a man coming back from injury. He's had a fantastic ready, tournament. Wrestle. Did so well in the heats, but he's, he's starting to blow a little bit here. And can Felix take advantage? Such a battler, isn't he, Thompson? Former champion, of course, but he's out. Well out. Out of the ring and effectively out of this competition now as well. Two-point win to Felix. Yeah! Needed those, didn't he? What a difference that could make on the uh, scoreboard. I did get you, I did get you. I did get you, I did get you. Felix saying, yeah, I got you. We all saw Mark. OK. Ready, wrestle! Charlene Holland's Holland still looking for that podium spot. As he said, it's down. Jimmy Marku's tournament down. now Charlotte to lose. Down. One throw. But Holland's would definitely want a podium finish here. <laughs> he looks disgusted, ready, doesn't Lawrence. he, Terry Holland's? Ready, back in the middle, ready, wrestle! Never really recovered from that bad start. The farmer's walk when he finished sixth, he was... Uh, he was chasing right from there, and Charlotte, who started so fast in that farmer's walk, been a bit difficult for him since. But they are literally Two wrestling for a place on the podium here, you would think. Ready, wrestle! Collins needs one more for the point. So Charlotte's got to go for the push-out, and it's not going to happen. Holland's yeah, Collins dominating that one. He'll have to take the point. And is it going to be enough to take third spot here and push Charlotte down to fourth? Just absolutely pancaked him there, don't they? That was shades of Big Daddy. OK, guys. In the position, ready, wrestle. Look at the glare between the two of them there. Oh, Throw yeah, Thomas. Hollands is finally getting the hang of this, isn't Up he? again, ready, wrestle. I think Hollands has said enough with this push-out. I'll just take the points by flattening these fellas. But if they're going to do that, oh, oh, he's in trouble. Oh, ho, ho, hang on. Did, uh... He's down first, I'm afraid. Mark dropped to full two knees. So it's a one throw, two throws to Holland. Yeah, Holland gets it's another throw. I was his knees like Felix was going to be spun out of there. He okay. almost turned it around as well. Wrestle. It's so tactical and technical, this event. You just think it's brute force. It's anything but, and that's another throw. Or is it even being called a force out? Is it being called a push out? I think that's an out. That'll be two points for Terry Hollands if that's what it is. So it's a two-point victory to Hollands. Yep, two points for Terry Hollands. Oh, oh, Felix feels aggrieved once again. Not a bad tally for Mark Felix, but he could be looking at a second place in the strongman competition once more. Now that's because this man has such a big lead, but is Jimmy Mark who's going to be OK for those Atlas Stones? He is really suffering there. These two boys shouldn't be doing this. Two over 40s in a wrestling ring. Come on. 
Well, two valiant warriors, two terrific strongmen as well. And who's going to get the upper hand here? Yeah, Eddie goes. Oh, I think Eddie's twisted Eddie's something there as well. Inside first. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, you pull the house over. Yeah, that doesn't look too clever. To help you up. Yeah, Westerby. I think is going to be credited with an easy win there because that hamstring's gone. You can't keep a good man down. But Mark Jimmy. Felix absolutely needs to Turn put Jimmy face. Marku down if he's going to have a chance Ready. to just reduce this deficit. Marku all bandaged up. He's got him moving, he's got him going, he's got him out. But did the hand... was the knee down there? This is what you've got to watch, though. Jimmy thinks he's just got a straight push-out, but let's watch that knee. Did the knee touch? The knee went down first to Felix, so it will not count as a push-out. It counts as a throw. Jimmy is very disappointed. He's feeling a bit tired. He thought he'd done the job there for two points, but it's just one throw. So Felix lives to fight another day. There's another throw, and it was Felix down first. Felix's knee touched the ground. Are you ready? He may have to Wrestle. settle for the point here, as he's very close to getting that third throw. Don't forget the 60-second time limit, and Felix has just got to go for Brokey. Get him out of there. But it's tough to get Jimmy out of there. Oh, he Jimmy's gets a throw. Jimmy's the ground. One to Felix. Two, two one. to one. Get ready. And the clock will start once again. And wrestle. Well, maybe Felix is just trying to drain his opponent here before the Atlas Stone, so he's got nothing left. He's in no hurry to try and get him out of there, is he? <laughs> they both seem to go out at the same time again. Oh, Felix, the vest is torn. Well, I don't know, how do you pick a loser out of... Who, who went out first there? 28 yeah, seconds. I think that's what they decided. That was uh, landing at the same time, so it goes on. Jimmy is going for the kill, surely. If nothing else, it's a throw, but it's been given a push-out. It's an extra point for Jimmy Marku. Finally, he got there. There's just no stopping this man, is there? Yeah, get the Hulk Hogan thing going. He's left it until event five, but Terry Hollins takes his first win of the final ahead of Westerby, and despite all his problems, the indomitable Jimmy Marku still takes third. Well, Terry, you're one of the walking wounded. That was a brutal event, but you came out on top. It puts you in a position where you can still win the whole competition on the stones. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's still mathematically possible, but um, highly unlikely. I think Jimmy's just got to put one stone up and he's, he's got the title. So, um, I mean, it looks like I'm probably going to be handing over my title for a year, but I'll be back next year for sure. And obviously, I'm going to go out and put in a big performance on the stones, last performance, and hopefully go out and blast through them quicker than I did last year. Yeah, the big fella's probably left it too late. That battle for second place is absolutely fascinating, but surely the title is Jimmy Marcus to lose. Well, Jimmy, the last event, the last step to take, the stones. You only need one stone to take the title. Are you confident? Well, I should be hard. Hopefully one stone, so let's see. The stage I am probably I can't make it. Do you think the body's going to hold together for that one final step? Yeah, God give, going to give me that strength to put one more stone. Well, we wish you luck. We'll see. Thank you, I need it. Are we looking at Britain's Strongest Man 2008? Join us after the break for the Atlas Stones to find out. Sponsored by Fisherman's Friend. Whatever. Do you believe in creationism? Does this ecosystem come in any other flavors? How will you create the universe? This Friday's Euro Millions jackpot is a gigantic 92 million pounds! Do you know I? What mess have you got us into now, Al? I ordered some right on equal friendly tea. He grows the stuff. I have your tea, senor. You oaf! PG Tips has already teamed up with Rainforest Alliance. They help make sure the people who pick PG have good working conditions, earn a decent living, and get medical care. I know you are here, so we should keep drinking PG tips. Yes, Al. 
Girl, how much did you buy? The usual, 80 bags. You bought 80 sacks? Not bags. I'm on you. Do something, Al. I do not live here. Uh, ah! When else, Diaz? Mm -hmm. uh, where's my purse? Once you get the saw chips in your blood, you can't ever get them out. From the maniacs who brought you Ice Road Truckers. It's scary, but at the same time, it's cool. Axeman starts the 17th of September on 5. Sponsored by Fisherman's Friend. Welcome back to Minehead for the last act of this year's Britain's Strongest Man tournament. One event left, you know what it is. The Atlas Stones is the classic end to any strongman and a fitting finale to this year's epic contest. And for Jimmy Marku to be crowned champion, all he need do is lift the lightest stone up onto that plinth. It will never have seemed heavier. The stones get heavier, the plinths get shorter, and you've got to put five stones on five plinths in 75 seconds. Well, Ollie Thompson was forced to withdraw with a biceps injury, so Mark Westerby needed one stone to confirm fifth place. He's talking of retirement. Don't do it, Mark. We'd hate to see you go. Mark Felix! Twice the heartbreak of second place. Lawrence Shackley! Lawrence Shackley, what a tournament he's had. And he's hoping for second place here. This battle for second place between these two and, of course, Terry Hollands has been absolutely fascinating throughout this event. But they're all playing second fiddle to Jimmy Marku, surely. But who's going to get second, who's going to get third, and who's going to be off the podium? Well, Felix is really dominating this, uh, and Terry, of course, looking very tired, may well struggle to beat Felix if he can put this up quickly. That's a great effort from Mark Felix. That fifth stone has beaten many, but not Mark Felix. That absolutely guarantees him a podium spot. It could confirm second place yet again. And to make sure of a podium spot himself, or to do something to get on the podium, he needs this fifth stone, Lawrence Charlet. This young man from Gloucestershire has done so well, such a huge improvement year on year. You know he's going to be a real force next year. Is that fifth stone going to go for him? And Mark said, come on, there it is, put it on there. No, not going to happen. He'll be disappointed, but he's got to look back on his work here this week with some pride, Lawrence Charlet. And here he is, looking like he's just come from a reenactment of a World War II movie. Terry Hollands! Jimmy Marku about to take the sword from the hand of Terry Jimmy Hollands. Jimmy Marku! One stone, he could do that with one arm tied behind his back. Hollands, though, will want to finish as high as he possibly can, and he knows his reign is over in just a moment. Here comes that moment. One stone, and you are looking at the new Britain's strongest man. And he's had enough, and who can blame him? But Terry Hollands hasn't had enough. He needs five stones to confirm second place so you know he wants this one no longer the champ but there's so much pride in Terry Hollands and he does take second place so there it is last year's champion is this year's runner-up and this year's champion is Jimmy Marku and doesn't he deserve it he only needed to lift one stone and that's exactly what Jimmy Marku did for the record, Mark Felix wins the Atlas Stones ahead of Hollands and Lawrence Chatelet. It's a convincing performance by Marku. That surge of three event wins, building him a lead that just couldn't be closed. Well, Jimmy, congratulations. You just needed to lift the one stone. You did it. You're now Britain's strongest man. How do you feel? I feel great. I feel very relieved. And uh, really, it's been a big battle competing again to those top guys. And, and I've He's been the hardest and the best top guys ever competed. I haven't done for a long time, but I mean, competing against the Terry, Mark, Dan, Oli, Mark Westerby, all of them, I mean, has absolutely been amazing. 
We are the best support we can ever wanted. They've been supporting us from the day we came here until now. And I'd like to thank, big thank to everyone, and especially to the audience they've been. We love them all. We love them all. Thank you very much for them. Well, Terry, that must seem a bit odd hearing that. You were Britain's strongest man last year. Second place this time around. How's it feel? Um, yeah, I'm not overly um, disappointed with coming second this year. Obviously, the field was a hell of a lot stronger this year. Obviously, a lot of guys went away from last year, made big improvements. Obviously, Jimmy being one of them, I think he's, he's a worthy champion for this year. He's been fantastic all the way through the competition. And I'm just pleased to be standing second on the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, Britain's strongest man, Jimmy Marku. Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen, along with a panel of green-fingered gurus, get to check out the talent when it comes to where we live in the brand new series, I Own Britain's Best Home and Garden, tomorrow at 8 on 5. Sponsored by Fisherman's Friend. Rory and Paddy are on the...